guys welcome to a new video and today i wanted to talk to you about tea if you've been following my channel for a while it probably won't come as a surprise that i am a huge tea lover i adore tea i drink tea every single day multiple times a day actually the majority of what i drink is tea i have quite an extensive tea collection if you're interested i have a video where i tour that collection so i will link that up in the info card to me there is nothing like savoring the moment of enjoying a cup of tea going through the whole process of boiling the water picking out the tea and then brewing the tea sitting down with the warm cup and just enjoying the smells and the flavors it's something that's able to comfort me at least a little bit in hard times and it's also something that i use to celebrate with people around some people take their tea very seriously and they're super particular about everything that surrounds the tea brewing and drinking process. I don't consider myself one of them. I get just as much enjoyment out of a simple mug with a tea bag in it and I definitely don't always follow all of the rules when I am making tea for myself but I do know a thing or two about making the perfect cup of tea and what you need to do in order to get that best practices and the steps that you can take to ensure that your cup is as perfect as possible so that is what I wanted to go through today I'm gonna share the entire process with you what you can do to get your best cup of tea to date so yes without further ado let's get started straight away I want to start out by talking about water. This is something that I feel like maybe often overlooked, but a cup of tea, of course, is pretty much made up of water. So the type of water that you use is very important and can have a huge influence on the outcome of your cup of tea in the end. I am very lucky to live in an area that has great quality tap water that doesn't have much of a flavor. Um, so I generally tend to use just tap water for my tea. But if your tap water does have a strong flavor, maybe there's a lot of chlorine in your water then I would definitely recommend filtering the water first before you use it to make tea. Filtering will give your water a much purer taste and it can really help improve the quality of your brew. If for some reason you don't have access to filtered water then bottled water is a great option. You can use bottled spring water just make sure that the spring is a mineral because mineral water has again different flavors and the minerals in the water can change the taste of the tea as well. When you have your water ready next step is to boil it and actually chances are you don't want to boil your water at all. All. Different types of tea require different water temperatures in order to unlock their full potential. So you want to heat green tea to 70 to 75 degrees Celsius. White and yellow tea needs to be heated to 80 degrees Celsius. And black tea as well as pu'er and oolong tea needs to be heated to 90 degrees. The only time you want to actually boil your water or heat it to 100 degrees is when you are making herbal teas or fruit teas or rooibos teas or other teas that aren't actually made of tea. Real tea, in quotation marks, comes from the Camellia sinensis plant. So the only types of tea that are actually rightfully tea are black tea, white tea, green tea, and yellow tea, and anything that is derived from that. So any type of tea, or what we call tea, that doesn't actually contain Camellia sinensis leaves is not real tea. Now, I personally do use the word tea to describe herbal teas and kind of other blends as well, but it is not technically correct, so I did just want to mention that. So any non-tea teas, you generally want to steep at 100 degrees. If your water is too hot for the type of tea that you are brewing, your tea will come out bitter and if your water is too cold then you won't be able to unlock the full potential of the tea leaves and develop all the complex flavors that it contains. So you want to be sure to really brew your tea at the right temperature. All right so now that we have the talk about water out of the way let's talk about the actual tea. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the tea quality. Now of course quality can be measured by several different factors. In general you can say that loose leaf tea is usually of a better quality than bagged tea but of course within the loose leaf tea range as well as within bag tea ranges there are huge differences in quality. However loose leaf tea is able to develop flavors better and develop more complex flavors and kind of deliver its full properties better than tea that is very finely ground or even powdered. So if you are a tea lover and you do really appreciate a good cup of tea chances are that you will enjoy loose leaf tea better than bagged 
tea. Another thing that often indicates quality in tea is the price. Good quality tea usually requires a lot more care. The leaves are hand-picked, sometimes only the youngest, kind of the top leaves are used. And then they are just treated with a little bit more care throughout the entire process, which obviously drives up the cost. But in the case of tea, I find that you can often taste the difference. Although more expensive tea doesn't always equal better quality tea, some teas are just marked up because of brand name or because they contain certain additives. So price isn't the only marker of quality in tea, but oftentimes better quality teas will be a little bit more expensive. So when you have your tea and you have your water and you are ready to steep, something to keep in mind is that, especially when you have loose leaves and especially if you have whole leaves, you need to give them some room to open up and to float around in the water. So preferably you wanna use a strainer that's as large as possible or put the leaves in the teapot directly and then strain them out as you pour the tea into a cup or mug or whatever you wanna use. If your leaves are compressed in a tea bag or in a strainer that's too small for them, you won't get the full benefits and the full flavor scope of your tea leaves. So try and find a strainer that's nice and large, nice and roomy, and that will allow your tea leaves to dance around in the water until they are ready. Then the next thing you want to be conscious of is the steeping time. The flavor of the tea or your brew changes with how long you keep your tea leaves in the water. Usually, especially with more luxury teas, the kind of optimal brewing time is indicated on the packaging, so that is a good place to start. But I recommend just going by taste for this. I have noticed huge differences in preference uh, between cultures, but also individuals, on how strong they like their teas. For example, uh, Dutch people like their teas very weak in general, whereas I found that the British like their teas really, really strong, at least for me. <laughs> so this is definitely something that you can experiment with, but again, do keep that indicated brewing time in mind, because that is usually the time that gives you optimum flavor. Again, brewing for a little bit longer results in a little bit more of a bitter tea, brewing for a little bit shorter results in a bit less flavor, a bit of a milder tea. So yeah, whatever your preference is, you can experiment with this. And after the time has passed, you can either choose to remove the leaves from the water if you are brewing a larger pot, or you can serve the tea if you plan to empty out the pot straight away. So that is entirely up to you. If I'm completely honest, I usually tend to just leave my tea in my water until I've finished the whole pot, uh, but that is not the proper way to do it. <laughs> By the way, many teas, especially real tea, uh, can be used several times. So if you have emptied your pot, you can oftentimes go over with a second batch of water and you will get a different flavor experience. Some green teas are really good for this, as well as some black teas that just develop more complex and different flavors each time you use them. Some can be used two times, three times, four times. So don't be too quick to throw out your tea leaves once they are used. Um, they can often be reused a couple more times. So at this point you're ready to pour your tea into your favorite cup or mug or bowl and enjoy it. I personally always drink my teas black, uh, meaning no sugar, no milk. This is the point where you can choose to add, you know, one of those or all of them. I know that adding milk to tea is the standard in some cultures. Some cultures add huge amounts of sugar or other sweeteners to their tea. And I also know that some sugars like to add salt to their tea, so that might be an option you can try one day if you're interested in that. So how many additions you want to use and how much you want to use of each is of course completely up to taste so experiment around with this see what you like uh, this can of course be different for each type of tea but as a kind of ground rule i would generally suggest adding milk to black teas and not necessarily to green teas but i would advise you to try each tea just without anything else at least once so that you get kind of a better feel for what the actual tea is and um, then start experimenting with whatever you want to add to make it more to your taste. So there it is, there is your perfect cup of tea. Now before you dive in, bring it up to your nose first and smell the tea. There are so many different oils and aromas that come off of a freshly brewed cup of tea that is just absolutely delicious. And smelling tea is half of the fun. If you ask me, there are many teas that have a much stronger smell than they do flavor. It is a huge part of the enjoyment. So really take your time to discover the scent of the tea first and then move on to exploring the tastes. And I also think many people don't realize how many different flavors there are in tea. You know how you have these kind of like taste wheels for wine tasting. You can do the same thing with tea. There are so many different 
types of notes that can be in tea. If you enjoy stuff like that, then you can try and discover some of those in your tea and see what the flavors remind you of and just enjoy your tea in a much more kind of mindful and explorative way. So that is how you create the perfect cup of tea. Now, before I end the video, I did just want to mention a few of my favorites because people always ask me about those. I'm not a huge fan of black tea in general, but my favorite kind of plain black tea would be Ceylon. I really enjoy Earl Grey tea as well. My favorite plain green tea is Sencha, and my favorite kind of flavored green tea is jasmine green tea. Um, I really, really enjoy kind of flowery teas in general. So I really like teas that contain roses or violets or lavender or jasmine, bergamot. Most of what I drink are actually non-tea teas. So that will be herbal infusions, rooibos again, um, or fruit infusions, just because again, it is pretty much the only thing I drink, so I don't want to, you know, over caffeinate myself. So I'll generally have one pot of green or black tea a day, and then the rest of what I drink is herbal or just other types of teas. Oh, and I also really, really enjoy white tea, but that is a little bit harder to come by, a little bit more luxurious, so I don't have that at home often. I think that brings us to the end of this video, guys, so I really hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something new about tea and tea brewing. This is kind of just the basics of tea making, but Yes, hopefully it was entertaining at least. So if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. If you would like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there'll be links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.